Hey folks, welcome back. This is lab number six, and this week we only have one topic that we're going to talk about, which are interfaces. Interfaces are a way to organize a bunch of classes such that the classes must meet a certain set of requirements in order to be an interface, uh, in order to implement an interface. So implementing them is very, very simple. Um, generally, what you would do is you would create a new Java class um, from the file. And in this case, you would mark it as an interface. And the interface might be something like math. All right, and so that's going to create public interface math. And then inside of math, you can have definitions for methods. All of these methods are inherently going to be um, abstract, meaning that there is no definition. So we might have a public void add numbers, which takes in num1 and num2. Um, and we might have a public void subtract numbers, which takes in an int num1 and num2. Okay, so basically all this interface is going to do for us is it produces a set of requirements that any class must meet if they are going to implement this math interface. So if I later come along and do um, a class called decimal math, I might say the decimal math implements math. Now, when I do that, if I attempt to compile it right now, I'm going to get errors because there are two methods, add number and subtract number, that are not defined in here. So in order to be able to do this, I must have in a public void add numbers, uh, which takes in an int num1 and an int num2. And then it must have an actual body, return num1 plus num2. OK, I see the flaw. This probably should have returned an int. And over in the interface, both of these should have been ints as well. I don't know why I typed void. That was silly. All right. So in my main math, or in my decimal math method, I have uh, the definition for add numbers. It still won't let me compile because it's saying I don't have a definition for subtract numbers. And I must have both. So public int subtract numbers int num1, int num2. OK, so when you're implementing the methods that are in an, an interface, they must have the same return type and the same number of parameters coming in. num1 minus num2 is the case in this one. All right, so now that I've done that over in main, I am welcome to create a decimal math. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say um, system.out.println, and then I'm going to say uh, enter number one. All right, and in order to be able to read in a number, I'm going to need a scanner. So I'm going to say scanner my scan equals new scanner system dot in. Oops. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to alt enter and import the class for Java Util Scanner. Um, now I should be able to say int num one equals my scan dot next int. And then I'm going to read in a second number. So I'm just going to copy those two lines, save myself a bit of time here. And I'm going to paste them. And I'm going to ask them to enter in num2. And I'm going to read in num2. And then I'm going to call my method in my math class. So in order to be able to call that method, I have to instantiate that class. So I'm going to say decimal math do math. I don't know what we want to call it. Gets new decimal math. And there we go. And now I should be able to say do math dot add numbers num1 and num2 and that's going to give me an int answer and I'm going to print out that answer okay so if I run all of this it doesn't really do anything very exciting it's going to prompt me for two numbers and it's going to return the sum of those two numbers Enter num1, 8, enter num2, 2, and magically the answer is 10. Cool. So what you've seen here is an implementation of an interface. The important parts of this are an interface simply starts off with the word interface, and then it will have as many methods as you want everybody to be able to implement. It is not possible in an interface to give any of these a body. So I cannot, for example, then start going in here. You'll see it immediately underlines it and says, you cannot do that. Interface abstract methods cannot have bodies. 
Um, you don't have to specify the keyword abstract when you define the method. It's implicitly abstract. Um, and so I'm just going to briefly talk about what an abstract method is and how this compares with an abstract class. So in the last lab, we implemented an abstract class. And in there, you could have abstract methods or you could have concrete methods. And we didn't really talk a whole lot about that, but let me make an abstract class real quick here. Um, and so I'm going to do, I, I don't know, stuff. <laughs> Not a great class name. All right, so if I declare this class to be an abstract, class, then I'm allowed to have abstract methods in here. So I can say public void new stuff, and I can actually say public abstract void new stuff and put a semicolon at the end. And that's perfectly valid. I can also have real fully fleshed out methods in here. So I could say public void do other stuff, and it can have a body. Right? And so the interesting part about what is different between an abstract class and an interface, an abstract class can have a mixture of abstract and concrete methods. This is an abstract method. This is a concrete method. The difference being this one has a body, this one does not. Where you come to an interface, they can only be abstract. It is not possible to put a concrete method into an interface. Um, so interfaces are kind of the extreme. You have concrete classes on one side and you have interfaces on the other, and then abstract classes are somewhere in the middle. They can either be closer to an interface, in which case they're all abstract methods, or closer to a concrete class, in which case they're all concrete methods. And so that's the difference between them. Again, this is a way of organizing information where a manager or a lead or a um, designer of a piece of software would put some requirements on um, any classes that are going to implement this interface. And so a real world example of this would be, again, we'll take a video game. If you're going to have a character that can move, then the character would have to meet certain requirements as to how they move. They'd have to have a method called move legs. They might need to have a method called their, you know, that calculates the speed that they can move at. They might have methods that render how they're actually walking, because obviously a centipede versus a person are going to walk quite differently. So the details of how the individual bad guys or good guys are going to walk is not something that the developer or the manager is going to want to deal with, but they're going to specify there has to be a method that explains how the feet are going to move, how the legs are going to move, how the character is going to move. And they would do that by creating an interface that forces the developer to write all of the methods that they care about. So that's why interfaces and abstract methods exist in, sorry, abstract classes exist in the real world. Um, honestly, in the real world, you'll see a lot more interfaces than abstract classes. Most people nowadays write interfaces. So that's the uh, lecture for today, and uh, good luck on your lab, and we'll see you next week.